So I've talked about uh, what I take to go urban sketching in my own hometown of Toronto and what I take on trips. But I just had a big trip, which if you subscribe, you're probably sick of me um, talking about Mexico. But I thought I would do a little bit of a recap of what I took, what I used, and what I didn't use, so maybe shouldn't take uh, next time around. So we're just going to go over it. I also have a list of um, what I use for urban sketching on my website. So you can go there as well for uh, different things like what sketchbooks I like, um, what pens I usually take, etc. But we'll cover some of that in this. So you'll probably have seen a tour of this sketchbook. That's important. You need an actual surface to uh, paint on, if that's what you're going to do. And so I didn't bring blocks of watercolor. It was a watercolor uh, workshop. Uh, so I knew that I'd probably be sticking just to watercolor. So I wasn't going to bring any um, acrylic markers or anything like that. Anything non uh, watercolor. Uh, except as, you know, additional things on top. So I got this sketchbooks, it's a Hannah Mila uh, sketchbook. It's their 100% cotton, and this served me well. The paper is really good. Um, it's a white paper, good thickness. It doesn't have a really odd texture like I found with this uh, Sea White at Brighton. Uh, so I highly recommend that. There we go. Moving on to the materials. So in another video, I have um, this palette. This is an art toolkit palette. And I bought this uh, for my birthday and filled it with my Jello Titanium uh, gouache. That's their line of gouache. Uh, they have my Jello gold and um, I think it's white but those are watercolors this is their gouache and i was told that it doesn't crack there is some cracking but it's not as bad as some other gouache where the bits you know start to come away from the pans and so there's potential for them to fall out and that's not what you want so so far so good i will have more updates about this palette. The only thing I found before I went away, I wanted to test them out. And if you apply it too thickly, they do have um, almost an acrylic look to the paint when it's dry. So it has a little bit of a shininess and a little bit of that kind of plastic um, quality. But when I was working with them with more water, they do have that flat matte um, opaqueness and if you put more water not so opaqueness so uh, I did use them and I love this size of the art toolkit palette it's really really handy to put into your bag and that was the other thing the bag that I brought you'll see on my website it's still my Fjall Raven um, blue bag, and it's great. It's very lightweight. It's um, got a sort of water resistant uh, fabric, and it doesn't show dirt and anything like that. So it was great. Going back, let's go to the pen case that I'm always talking about. This is Lihit Labs. Um, pen case and I have it absolutely stuffed with things and one of those things is the little watercolor palette that I made quite a while ago and there's videos for that and it's a mix of different brands um, of colors that I know that I, I use a lot and that's in an old gift card container 
and I also have the swatch um, of all the colors that are in it there and this is a swatch card for this little palette which is kind of like the annex of this palette and it's another art toolkit palette and so it's just it's more watercolor but they're in the really tiny little mini pens it's very cute so that is good to have I had both of those going all the time so they definitely got a lot of work and the pencil case of course got a lot of work and like I said it's chalk full of a whole mess of things so I always have an automatic pencil so I don't have to worry about um, sharpening pencil it's great let's talk about pens I have this brush pen which I did try to use but <laughs> I forgot to check um, the amount of ink that was in it so it went dry while I was there but when I got home I just put instead of buying the cartridges this is Pentel's um, brush pen I just used the um, platinum carbon ink to put into it and I use I use this syringe to fill up the cartridge that came with it and so far so good And then I always have fine liners with me. These are Winsor & Newton. They're really great. They come in different nib um, sizes and different colors. This is the sepia one. I have gray and black as well. And then there's these parallel, um, Pilot Parallel pens. This one's been modified. It has a little corner, um, sort of rounded off and that was done by instructor at the um, Urban Sketchers Symposium for a workshop I did. And so they're different widths. This one's slightly smaller. It's got a tiny little nip. So I filled these again with the syringe and with my own ink um, into the cartridge and this ink was uh, the octopus ink and it was in gray fox so it's kind of a bluey almost like a Payne's gray color so I did both of those with that ink and the pens that got the most use are my um, sailor uh, food aid pens so these are those um, fountain pens that have a little bit of a bent nib and I mark these this one has diatrementus ink in it this is Laywines um, is a Toronto shop that has um, their own branding on the, but it's diatrementus ink and it's in urban sepia and so that's in that one and then in this one is the Platinum Carbon Ink. So I have these little clips that I bought at Lane Lines. They're for the Caveco fountain pens, which I haven't been using um, lately. And that just helps keep it from slipping out of my pen case all the time. So always make sure to clip those, clip those in. And I think, oh, this is the last, this is a pen that I got on AliExpress. It is also a Fude style pen with bent nib. Uh, in this one, I put the Diatrimentus Document Ink in Urban Gray. So that was all filled up. The problem I was having with this one, um, I love using this pen, but it wasn't, the ink wasn't flowing properly. So I was having to constantly fiddle with it but that got used. So the one thing that probably the fine liners didn't get used as much, got a little bit, um, but not quite as much. And then I always have a little Posca pen 
This is the 0.7 millimeter, very fine tip, because you always want to add a little bit of white in places. And that is it for pens. Then when we go to pencils, I do have uh, colored pencils in here. There's certain colors that I keep in this side that I use a lot. And you can tell because they're getting kind of worn down. Um, so I keep keep them here because I use them a lot and also because I, I can't find them when they're small um, in the other section. So I always have this uh, Karen Dosh Luminance. This is the Payne's Gray 60%, number 507. And then the Chinese White Derwent Drawing Pencil. Very, very good white. Uh, a black polychromos fabric castell i just i got this for free recently so i just put that in there another luminance uh this is the Payne's gray full strength so that one is 508. i have this pit pencil um, by faber castell it's an oil based um in sanguine and this um it, it won't, it can act as a resist, so, as well as, I have it in black, but I don't know where that is. Anyways, moving on. This chocolate color is so dark. It's really, really great. All the Derwent drawing pencils are fantastic. Um, really, really bold, well, bold muted colors. It's only a muted palette. Another luminance, I have light cobalt blue, and that's 661. I like those for sometimes um, reflections in windows. Then I have this Stabilo um, water soluble. It can go on paper, glass, plastic, and metal, as you see. And that's a really nice, strong black pencil, but it's water soluble. So if you want it to be permanent, then go with a black watercolor. And then the Luminance Raw Umber 10%, 842, also goes in there. It's a nice kind of buff, titanium grayish color. Good for adding texture for like stone or brickwork or anything like that and I'll go on to the other colored pencils I'm not going to go um, one by one with what colors I have because that is very you know it depends on what palette you like so what suits somebody's working um, practices won't suit another but I just wanted to mention these tritone Koinors. Uh, these are great this is the rainforest one, so it's about three different greens in it. And it really helps add texture to your foliage. So I always have that in there. And so moving on to brushes, I have this tiny little, I think it's a Winsor Newton brush, and I can't remember what size it is but it's super small, as you can see against my hand. That often hides in this little pouch. The ones I love the most and you use all the time are these Tintoretto. It's 1337. I have them in size two and size six. I got the size, I think maybe the two at that workshop and then bought the six because it's just it's a mop style uh, brush. It's, it's synthetic, but it just, it holds water so well and it has a really, really sharp tip. So I love, love this brush. 
those go in there and to round out the brushes here I also have this Princeton Mottler it's great for laying down um, colors and I used it for the um, gouache when I was laying stuff down so that's their Neptune range and then I have this Jackson's Raven brush, another mop brush, just for when I needed extra wash capabilities. That was handy. And two other travel brushes. Oh, that's the wrong one. I brought that one I just repaired because it started to come loose. This is Rosemary & Co. R19 brush, and I think it's a size 10, but I'm not too sure. That is very nice. And then I also brought a travel brush, a flat travel brush. And this is Pro Arte. Um, is it? The Midas Touch Flat. And so I like using flat brushes for gouache. I think it just seems to work better with the flat. So those went into that little box perfectly. I'll get to that in a bit. And then the other things that I brought were watercolor or water brushes just in case I didn't have um, the ability to bring extra water or have a place to dump water. So these are always, always handy. And I have three of them. I don't know where. One's a fabric castell with a smaller brush. And I think this one's a Pentel. No, it's Kuritake. It has a flat brush. And then this one's Karen Dash. And it has this little push button for getting the water. The other ones you just squeeze. And it's a little bit, little bit thicker than the, the Faber-Castell one. So those always live in here. That's everything. Oh, the other things that just sort of hide in here are uh, a little eraser, white eraser, and a little kneadable eraser hides out in there. I have a little tiny tube of white gouache, and then I have these little tiny scissors that I bought at staples and that was no problem through security so those fold up and they really came in handy actually people were actually asking to borrow them and then a little clip and I had a bigger clip as well bigger bulldog clip just in case it was windy so that is the pen case portion Let's move on to some little extras that I put in. I have further uh, watercolors in this Altoids box. These are the Schmincke, uh Urban Granulating Colors. I thought those would be great to bring as well. They don't take up much room. And then these are my auto watercolors that I make. And I put them in uh, quarter pans so that, again, they wouldn't take up very much space. And I also have always bring a pencil sharpener with a cover so that I don't, you know, have shavings all over the place or know where to dump them. We found that a lot of the public spaces in Mexico City didn't have bins. Uh, especially where we were in Kyokan, not so much in the historic district, but 
so there wasn't really anywhere to dump things. And I'm one of those people, I cannot put the littlest bit of litter. I have pockets just full of, of litter. And I also brought this little plastic um, palette for mixing colors. It's really small. I think it came with this, maybe the Sennelier um, palette, but it's nice and small, nice and light. And that just went into the back of my backpack or backpack slash um, purse. I brought this viewfinder, but I didn't really use it. Um, I, what can I say? <laughs> sometimes they're useful. Sometimes, you know, I just go straight into laying out the composition anyways. Then I have this water jug. Uh, it's pretty good for not leaking. I think I got this at Blix. Um, but you know, you can find whatever works for you. I had forgotten that I was, I should have brought the Faber-Castell ones that pop up and down, collapsible ones. Um, I didn't, but you know, this was perfectly fine. I had a bottle of water ready to go, uh, to clean that out as well. And then always have a rag and some tissue on you. I bring Kleenex because I both need it for my nose. Um, but also uh, sometimes it works better than the cloth because this cloth can you, uh, leave a texture. So if you're trying to mop up excess paint, um, sometimes Kleenex is better. And then suntan lotion because I got my neck burnt on the day that didn't look like it was very sunny um, and I wasn't wearing my hat that day. So always carry that with you. I had it with me, but I still <laughs> didn't put it on. Then I had these brush pens. These are water soluble. Um, the Ecoline are uh, dye based, so they're not um, light fast. But if you're working in a sketchbook, that's not a huge issue. And then I have these Tombow um, dual end watercolor or water soluble markers. And they have some beautiful colors. And that's the, the brush nib for the equine. So this was in a tiny little pouch one that I got when I was in California last year. And then I hemmed and hawed about whether I would take uh, extra colored pencil. And I'm kind of glad I did. In some situations, it was nice to have the extra colors. And especially at night when I was, you know, adding to some of my sketches, it was nice to have a full range of colors. Uh, especially as, you know, some places were so colorful and if you've seen some of my colors in my bag they usually take they're very um, muted so it's nice to have the brighter colors and I just have a black wing pencil here and another eraser that's just always in this um, and that's the range of Derwent Chromaflow pencils So that's their newest range of colored pencils and they're, they're pretty good and they're cheaper than the Derwent Lightfast pencils so that's nice I think that's that's 72 set so that is about all that I took I also took a mat one of those collapsible mats to sit down on um, because I never you know, maybe there'd be something wet. In a couple of places, it was pretty, um, some of the benches are pretty dirty because trees um, were above them. And so it was nice to have that. That's up on my um, website as well. I didn't bring a collapsible stool. I didn't want to have to carry it around or worry about, you know, if we go into a museum or anything like that. Um, and I was trying to travel very light. I only had carry-on. 
and this all went in carry-on for the week and it got me through and I don't think there was much that I didn't use. Oh, except I haven't talked about this. So I did what I didn't think I would do. I broke the Neo Color 2 Karen Dash uh, water soluble crayons. I broke them in half so that I could fit more colors. So, and I had these sample size ones, which are about, about the same size um, already like that. So I just, it was hard. I have to say, I've seen other people do it and with no problem. And I was always like, I'm never doing that, but I did. And then I put a couple of bigger colors, some neon and some silver. I didn't use those, but I did use neo colors. And then I put a little um, stick of glue and I did use that. And so that and those two extra travel brushes all fit into this little box and it kept everything nice and tidy and not falling about. So that, that is now, that is that. Um, all that I took on my recent trip to Mexico City and it was fantastic. I can't wait to go back. Thanks so much, bye.